Hello world, welcome. This is the news bulletin on Kashimawa TV. I'm your host Christy. Thanks for joining us. I do believe you're having a wonderful weekend. On the news bulletin, support for South Africa's African National Congress near 40% weeks before election, Ipsos poll shows. Support for South Africa's governing African National Congress has fallen to just over 40%, an Ipsos opinion poll showed, weeks before a general election that could usher in the biggest political change since the end of the apartheid era. While the African National Congress is still on track to win the most votes on May 29th, if it gets less than 50% support, it would have to seek one or more coalition partners to govern the country. The first such alliance since the party swept to power under liberation hero Nelson Mandela 30 years ago. The uncertainty and apprehension surrounding the potential outcome and consequences of the 2024 elections echo the feelings experienced by the nation on April 27, 1994, Ipsos said in a statement, referring to the first post-apartheid elections, as well as voting for a new parliament, which will then choose the next president. South Africans will vote for provincial legislatures in next month's election. President Cyril Ramaphosa is seeking a second term. Ipsos estimated support for the ANC at 40.2%, down from 40.5% in a similar poll released in February and 43% in October. Its findings were based on face-to-face -face interviews with 2,545 registered voters in all nine provinces in March and April and have a margin of error of 1.9% at a 95% confidence level. Support for the African National Congress's nearest rival, the Democratic Alliance, was at 21.9% compared to 20.5% in February, the poll showed. The African National Congress is still seeking to retain its parliamentary majority and on the campaign trail, the party has sought to play up its achievements in the post-apartheid era. But polls show voter discontent is on the rise because of issues like unemployment, corruption, crime and poor services. The African National Congress's potential coalition partners include the economically liberal Democratic Alliance which has not ruled out a deal with the African National Congress and the far-left Marxist economic freedom fighters. Ipsos estimated support for the EFF at 11.5% down from 19.6% in October after the formation of another party, the Umkanto Sizwe, in December that has been endorsed by former President Jacob Zuma. Umkanto Sizwe's support was at 8.4% in the Ipsos poll. Another poll, conducted in February by Johannesburg-based think tank the Branthers Foundation and the Serbi Strategy Group, estimated support for the African National Congress at 39%. In other news, Burkina Faso suspends BBC, VOA radio broadcasts over killings coverage. Burkina Faso has suspended the radio broadcasts of BBC Africa and the US-funded Voice of America for two weeks over their coverage of a Human Rights Watch report accusing the army of extrajudicial killings, authorities said. In the report based on its own investigation, the rights watchdog said the West African country's military summarily executed about 223 villagers, including at least 56 children, in February as part of a campaign against civilians accused of collaborating with jihadist militants. Human Rights Watch said the Burkina Bay Army has repeatedly committed mass atrocities against civilians in the name of fighting terrorism, and it called on authorities to investigate the massacres. The country's Communication Council said Human Rights Watch report contained peremptory and tendentious declarations against the army likely to create public disorder and it would suspend the programs of the broadcasters over their coverage of the story. Authorities also said in a statement they had ordered internet service providers to suspend access to the websites and other digital platforms of the BBC, Voice of America and Human Rights Watch from Burkina Faso. Also, Voice of America stands by its reporting about Burkina Faso and intends to continue to fully and fairly cover events in that country, acting VOA director John Lipman said in a statement. The Voice of America strictly adheres to the principles of accurate, balanced, and comprehensive journalism, therefore, 
We asked the government of Burkina Faso to reconsider this troubling decision. Human Rights Watch conducted its investigation after a regional prosecutor said in March that about 170 people were executed by unidentified assailants during attacks on the villages of Kamsilga, Noden and Soro. We are deeply disturbed by reports of the killing of large numbers of civilians, including children in an overall context of fighting between armed groups and Burkina Bay forces, the United Nations Human Rights Office said in a statement. Perpetrators need to be held accountable and victims' rights to truth, justice and reparations must be upheld, the office said, adding that it was also concerned by the temporary suspension of the two media outlets. Burkina Faso is one of several Sahel nations that have been struggling to contain Islamist insurgencies linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State that have spread from neighboring Mali since 2012, killing thousands and displacing millions. Frustrations over authorities' failure to protect civilians have contributed to two coups in Mali, two in Burkina Faso and one in Niger since 2020. Moving on, let us press on with United Kingdom migrant plan. Rwanda tells critics. Rwandan President Paul Kagame's government said on Friday it would take as many migrants as Britain sends its way and urged shouting critics of the deportation plan to now let both nations proceed. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak expects first flights to leave in 10 to 12 weeks after Parliament passed legislation this week to sidestep legal objections that the migrants could be sent back to nations where they may face mistreatment. No matter what number is announced to arrive here tomorrow or after tomorrow we are capable of receiving them, Deputy Government Spokesperson Elaine Mukirlinda told news sources, adding that Rwanda did not yet know dates or numbers. With a long history of receiving refugees from Africa's Great Lakes region and elsewhere, Rwanda had temporary housing ready for migrants from Britain, Mukirlinda added, with longer-term facilities under construction as they go through the asylum process and potentially establish residency. Kagame won plaudits for rebuilding Rwanda after the 1994 genocide that killed more than one million people, turning it into one of Africa's fastest-growing economies. But his government has been accused by Western nations and rights activists of muzzling the media, repressing critics, and backing rebel groups in neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. For two years, critics have just shouted without proposing another solution, Mukirlinda said of the United Kingdom migrant plan. Today, I would say, now the shouting is over. We don't claim this solution is a miracle solution but at least let these two countries implement it. Britain says the plan will deter dangerous crossings of the English Channel in small boats via people smugglers. This week's legislation states that some existing UK rights statutes will not apply to the scheme and Rwanda must be treated by British judges as a safe destination. Sunak has also said he is prepared to ignore orders from European Court of Human Rights and joining the government from the Reporting asylum seekers to Rwanda. Asked how Rwanda would respond if the European Court of Human Rights imposed an injunction on deportations but Britain ignored it, Mukirlinda said problems around the plan were for London to resolve. We don't have anything to say or criticize on the internal affairs of the British government, he said. If they lose before the courts Rwanda will accept that decision. Britain has already paid Rwanda more than £200 million about $250 million under the scheme and to resettle some 300 refugees could cost more than £600 million, the UK Parliament's spending watchdog has said. Britain said in 2022 that the first migrants to arrive would be temporarily lodged at a 100-bed hostel in Kigali that was previously a home for genocide survivors. Lastly on the news bulletin, France ready to finance Morocco's 3 gigawatt power link to Western Sahara. France is ready to participate in funding a 3 gigawatt power cable linking the Moroccan city of Casablanca to the town of Dakla in Western Sahara, French Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire said. Western Sahara has been disputed between Morocco which calls it its southern provinces and the Algeria-backed Polisario Front, which demands an independent state there. I confirm to you that we are ready to participate in funding this project, Le Maire told a Moroccan-French business forum in Rabat. In February, French Foreign Minister Stéphane Sojourn had said France backs Morocco's investments in Western Sahara and reaffirmed support for Rabat's autonomy plan for the territory 
signaling a warming up of ties between the two countries after a period of diplomatic frost. Morocco wants France to recognize its full sovereignty over Western Sahara, following the example of the US and many Arab and African countries. France is also willing to cooperate with Morocco in developing solar, wind and green hydrogen as well as nuclear power, Le Maire said. French development agency would offer a loan of 350 million euros to help Morocco phosphates and fertilizers giant OCP. With its decarbonization push, Le Maire said, France is the largest foreign investor in Morocco with an investment stock amounting to 8.2 billion euros about 8.75 billion dollars up to 2022. Morocco is home to industrial facilities of leading French firms such such as Renault and Safran. This has been the News Bulletin. I'm Christy, signing out. Do have a lovely weekend. Now that's all we have for you viewers on the News Bulletin. Get social with us, subscribe to this channel Kashimawo TV. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Christy.